Greetings and welcome to LGR Oddware, where we're taking a look at hardware and software that is odd, forgotten, and obsolete. And this might not look so odd as it is here. This monitor is just an, another 90s looking CRT, but it's got quite the party trick. Yeah, look at that. <laughs> a fully rotating CRT monitor from 1991 that works with DOS and Windows 3.1 PCs. Let's take a closer look at it. Alrighty, so this right here is the Radius Full Page Pivot Display from 1991. A rotating CRT monitor. Yeah, nowadays rotating between portrait and landscape mode is the norm on everything from phones to tablets to two-in-one laptops and whatnot, but 30 years ago, yeah, not so much, especially on CRTs. Now sure, you can turn any CRT on its side, and there were a whole bunch of arcade cabinets that did this, and I've done it myself with various TVs and arcade boards in Tate mode, but the pivot is built to rotate back and forth easily, with no special additional hardware or visa mounts or anything like that, and you would certainly pay for the privilege back then. It cost $1,249 for the monitor itself when it was announced in September of 1991, and it was sold alongside the $449 Multiview SVGA card, which Radius presented as an optional companion, but it's actually pretty vital to the pivot, as we'll see. So in reality, the complete package cost roughly $1,700, and that's around $3,318 adjusted for inflation in 2021. So it's no surprise this was an SVGA monitor aimed at businesses and professional PC users with a stated 15-inch display area, although it's really more like 14 inches. And its reason for existing was really to be geared towards desktop publishing, computer-aided design, data entry, and word processing. And to that end, the CRT viewing area ends up being roughly the same as an 8.5-inch by 11-inch sheet of paper. Not only that, but it was in color, not just monochrome, as most of Radius's previous displays were. Yeah, all this came together as quite an impressive product back in 1991, as you can see here in this clip from a 91 episode of Computer Chronicles. And you're getting maybe a third to 50% of the document, and you're, this real estate space is wasted. Well, simply by pivoting the monitor, we automatically resize the document, and it comes back up. If you notice here, you're now seeing the full page. Barry James, just to make sure nobody thinks that it's magic here, I mean, you weren't touching any buttons to do this, no. right? This is happening <laughs> automatically, automatically inside the monitor. And just tell us what, what's making that happen. Yeah, it's very simple. We have a little mercury <clears throat> switch in here, and so when you pivot it, it sends a signal back to the computer, and then it automatically mm -hmm. resizes and, and knows that. So yeah, let's take a closer look at the monitor itself. It's got a pretty nice tube in there, actually, with a 0.28 millimeter dot pitch, anti-glare coating, and being capable of resolutions up to 1024 by 768. With the display hardware it came with, meant to show 256 colors in all resolutions, with up to 32,768 at Super VGA and lower resolutions making this the best portrait mode Radius monitor yet. And yeah, Radius was well known for all their portrait displays, especially for the Macintosh, starting in 1986. However, many of those were stationary. Not the pivot, though. The pivot, of course, pivots. And the way that it does this is there's a mercury sensor inside signaling to the drivers and software to rotate everything on screen 90 degrees and reorient whatever's displaying on your computer. And go figure, this one actually came from Computer Reset, the gigantic electronics and computer warehouse in Texas. See my video on that for a tour of the place as it was a while back. A big thanks to LGR viewer Dan, who offered to send this to me for the cost of shipping. He picked it up at Computer Reset, and noticed it was in fantastic shape. It basically looked unused. So he took it home and tested it out, and unfortunately he didn't have any hardware that could really take advantage of it, so he offered it to me, and so yeah, I paid for him to send it over, and here it is, uh, in the box, no less. I love these illustrations on the side. That's some good marketing. You got landscape mode on one side and portrait mode on the other. A nice touch getting across what this thing is all about. 
Also kind of fascinating with this particular unit is who it belonged to originally back in the day before it ended up in Computer Reset, and that was Intex Information Services, also known as JWP Incorporated before that, and they were a technical services firm involved in the construction, installation, and maintenance of cost control systems for Fortune 1000 companies. <laughs> yeah, they were acquired in 1993, became Intex, and I guess they wanted some of these monitors. As for what's included in the box, well, there is a manual for the monitor itself, just going over the basics of installation and usage, as well as VGA and power cables, and that's it. Uh, thankfully, Dan also tracked down the multi-view SVGA card and software that would have been sold alongside it like 99% of the time, along with some documentation printed out, which is awesome. And of course, finally in the box was the monitor itself, which is pretty beefy and heavy for its size, largely due to the radius patented rotating mechanism going on. And it also sits taller than other 14, 15 inch CRTs due to the rotation mechanism, which I actually prefer since it makes everything sit closer to eye level. Now there are no controls on the bottom or the front, but on top you get brightness and contrast control knobs right next to the clicky power switch. And then around back, you get adjustment pots inset in there for vertical size, horizontal centering, and vertical centering, as well as a slot for a security lock, a power cord, and the 15-pin VGA port, which actually is a slightly different pinout, as you might expect, since it also needs to send information back and forth for sensing the rotation and doing some serial data stuff with the software. And yeah, even with everything plugged in, it, it's very easy to rotate 90 degrees on this big old rotating cylinder thing that's mounted on. And either way it's oriented, the monitor also tilts and the base swivels quite a bit. You get a lot of range out of this thing. Now, as for the card itself, it's actually a pretty standard SVGA ISA card. There was a microchannel architecture version available too. And you know, it's not exactly required to operate the monitor. I mean, you can plug the pivot into anything with VGA and it'll be fine, but the software and the card working together with the monitor is what allows for the real time pivoting stuff, which is kind of the whole point. And really a lot of that is being taken care of by drivers and software. The card itself is a standard Video 7 chipset with the Headland Technology HT209D with one megabyte of VRAM on board. Not the fastest SVGA card around, but is pretty darn good for 91, with enough memory to allow for 1024 by 768 resolution at 60 hertz and 256 colors. It also has one of those 26 pin feature connectors on top, which I thought maybe it's supposed to plug into your existing VGA card or something, but nope. The multi-view card is meant as a replacement, so the feature connector is just for optional TV tuners, capture cards, MPEG decoders, and stuff like that. And lastly, there's a bunch of dip switches, which if you just leave them all down, then it's fine by default with the radius monitor, but there's a lot of options. If you have non-radius monitors and multi-sync things that you want to connect it to, nothing we'll need to worry about here. So let me go ahead and get the card installed, and the monitor plugged in and the software set up, and we will experience some early 90s portrait mode computing oddware. Alrighty, time to pivot away from all of the setup and backstory and such and get right to the demonstration. I'm going to be using the LGR Woodgrain PC for this here and check out this BIOS startup for the graphics card. One of the more enjoyable ones I've seen on an SVGA card, I think. But yeah, at this point it just boots up in landscape mode like any other CRT. And you can use it this way, just connect it to anything, but you won't be able to pivot around what's on screen until you install stuff. And you also might notice that the cursor there is blinking a lot faster than you might be used to. And yeah, we've got a 107 hertz vertical refresh rate going on here in DOS. And uh, yeah, you get higher refresh rates all around really with this monitor for the most part between 72 and 107 hertz in most applications. Yeah, it's, you know, nice and responsive and cool. But uh, in terms of getting it set up, you have this disc right here, which will get the utilities and drivers going for the multi-view. And this just has a bunch of different files for configuring certain programs to work with the card and the display. All this is on archive.org, by the way. I don't know if it was already backed up, but I put it up there. And at this point, you get a selection of programs that you can configure that you want to work with the radius. So stuff like AutoCAD, Lotus123, and WordPerfect, but uh, also just clear.com and set mode. And yeah, those are actually replacements for the clear screen commands and DOS things like that. 
so that it does what it needs to. And once those are installed, it starts adding some stuff to your autoexec and config.sys just to make sure that it has a TSR going and it knows what to do when you rotate your display. So restart the computer and it'll load into radius mode. All right. So we've got that going in the background and now that lets you just, <laughs> the squeakiness, you gotta get used to the squeakiness. There you go. And now you've got a completely different refresh rate and DOS in portrait mode. Let me go ahead and adjust my camera here. Yeah, that's better. All right, so it's down to 72 hertz refresh rate whenever it's in the portrait mode, and then it'll switch back to 107 when you're in landscape. So that's a thing to keep in mind, at least when you're filming it. Uh, and yeah, at this point you can do all your normal DOS stuff and it's just vertical instead, which is uh, pretty fantastic, honestly. So, I mean, you can see all kinds of stuff on here. However, in terms of programs, well, that's the unfortunate part about this, is that as cool as it is when it is working, you really do have to use programs that are designed for it. So for instance, MS-DOS Editor is not designed for it, so it only displays this many columns and it's cut off here. And, you know, you can switch it back really easily. See, there we go. I mean, that's fine. It's got high refresh rate. looks great in person, but, uh, yeah. Not so great when you're, you know, you got programs like this that aren't optimized for the radius. But I absolutely love going through files and whatnot. It's just great to be able to see so many more things listed out like this. I have tried lubricating it in multiple different ways. It's, this is actually better. It was even squeakier when I first got it, but you know, it's just kind of how it is. So again, forgive the squeaky. But yeah, it's just a neat little thing here to show you what's going on in terms of the SVGA card and you can do some tests and such. And we don't need to do that. It's working just fine. And let's go ahead and run some things that are optimized for it, such as AutoCAD release 11. Uh, let's just load up an existing drawing. And there we go. We have AutoCAD going here. Everything's vertical. Uh, I think we're running at 1024 by 768 is what I set it at in the options. You can also run 800 by 600, but yeah, it's nice and sharp. Looks great. I don't know how to use this, <laughs> but uh, I mean, it's cool, right? I don't know. I think I think it's cool. I mean, uh, let me see if this works, because yeah, it doesn't. For some reason, it doesn't actually help you switch. Like once you're in the program itself. Um, you can go back to the command prompt menu thingy and then, you know, if you're in this mode, then it'll load up the AutoCAD editor here in whichever mode you started in, uh, in terms of the orientation of the monitor, but it doesn't let you switch. Uh, it seems like it should be able to do it, but it doesn't. All right, so another one we can check out that I believe I've got set up is WordPerfect 5.1. Yep, okay, well, it just went straight to it and refresh rate has changed once again. Not something you notice in person, but yeah, check this out. Super cool. All kinds of rows and columns to play with, and it looks truly wonderful. You know, like I said earlier, it's uh, pretty darn close to a 8.5 by 11 sheet of paper. Ooh, the static is nuts. <laughs> CRTs. Fantastic. I wish it supported more programs out of the box. Because yeah, I mean, you really are just limited to uh, whatever it's optimized for, or if you've got other programs that happen to come with some optimizations for these radius full page pivot displays in DOS. Because, you know, I mean, if you've got nothing going to optimize your software, like Doom here, then uh, it, it's just gonna be sideways. So, sorry. No such thing as portrait doom or pivot doom or <laughs> whatever. Uh, at least not yet, man. You know, hey, somebody uh, do a source port for DOS. Pivot doom. That'd be amazing. That would be stupid. But I would love to see it running properly or, you know, in, in the orientation that, uh, like, just to see doom switch between the two. Because, yeah, you need the game to either recognize that the pivot is a thing and know when to rotate it, or just have an option in the options menu that allows you to flip the gameplay 90 degrees. One of the few games, actually, in DOS that I know of that allows you to do that is Absolute Pinball. And, unfortunately, like, it, <laughs> this should work. But, uh, well, you'll see 
It's okay, you know, normally it's just your standard PC pinball thing and it's all in this horizontal mode that is not ideal for pinball. It'd be great to have a vertical display. Well, if you go here, you do have this thing called Visa Flip. And it makes, <laughs> It makes everything vertical, you know, it flips the entire gameplay 90 degrees, but unfortunately it doesn't seem to be compatible with the multi-view SVGA card. And I've tried it a couple of different ways with some uh, different driver versions, or I think they're different driver versions for DOS, as well as UniVBE and just any other options that I can find. It doesn't work uh, in either of the different Visa modes it offers. So that sucks. If anybody uh, knows of any other DOS games that do have a way to flip like that, let me know. I'd like to try them. So let us move right on over into Windows 3.1 once it loads back here. I don't know why the game froze the computer, but it did. So we're restarting because that's just how it goes. Yeah, look at that. Squeaky. Look at that. I, I love that very Apple Mac-esque fading in and out. <laughs> Such a cool effect. So um, in terms of the Windows software for here, yeah, it's pretty straightforward stuff. It is just the other disk and you install that and it gets some drivers going as well as some software for the pivoting itself. This is uh, just in 1024768 right here and it installs this little radius pivot control applet thingy right here. You got your color resolution and vertical refresh changes. Now, you will notice that actually dragging windows around is eh, relatively speedy, but it also is kind of not, kind of slow. I don't know. It's, it's not the very quickest GUI accelerator I've got, that's for sure. And just using windows in portrait mode is simply fun, I think, especially using anything that allows you to just maximize and fill the entire screen, like Solitaire, for instance. Yeah, it doesn't scale all the cards because Windows 3.1 Solitaire just doesn't do that, but you can go in between the different orientations and it reorients everything in the background, which I think is just so cool. Like it's really neat what they pulled off here in terms of the software and hardware combination of stuff to do this. The thing is though, it only really works with maximized properly scaling programs. So it, it really has to support that uh, if it maximizes fully and scales things, or at least maybe not scales things, but just moves things around on its own, then it's gonna work fine. If it doesn't though, it just kind of looks wonky. Like we can uh, have program manager going here and let's say uh, have a bunch of stuff opened like this and we'll do tile like this right here. And then if we switch it, well, it's all screwed up now. Of course, you can just go here and do that again, but you have to do that every single time you change orientation. So, uh, yeah, it's got its limitations, but still, it's neat when it works. Let's get some office stuff going here, like Excel, for instance. Yeah, there we go. Heck yeah, look at that. Perhaps not completely the most ideal solution here, but um, you know, you want to read things this way. You got a really long document that goes vertically instead of horizontally, then <laughs> not a bad way to look at all your data. Even better, of course, would be something like Microsoft Word, you know, because you're going to be editing documents in a portrait thingy anyway. So uh, wonderful. And of course, just the regular old Windows programs that it comes with. Those work too. You can get the uh, README file for Windows 3.1. We can read so much of it all at once. It's just extremely pleasant to use. It's, this is making me want like a modern uh, portrait mode <laughs> monitor, like off to the side of my ultra wide. I don't know. I'd never really thought about how useful it would be. <laughs> I don't know, I just never used it. And uh, the fact that it's on Windows 3.1 in DOS is doubly amusing to me. So um, I don't know if you're enjoying, but I am. Of course, we also got games. I mean, come on now, you got something like Ski Free. This thing scales to your entire screen and it's a normally a vertical kind of portrait mode game anyway. So this right here 
is the positively most ideal way to play Ski Free Man. It almost makes me think that this was <laughs> like developed for a portrait mode display. Yeah, Ski Free. Tetris, on the other hand, uh, not so much. This could work very well, but the way that this game is made, it's just it just kind of scales it and squashes it in other directions. So, you know, not, not ideal. Uh, same for Jez Ball. Yeah, it maximizes, but this is all that you get. Extremely common on Windows 3.1, Windows 3, even 95, you know, just all these Windows programs that they just, they don't do any scaling, which sucks. Same for Chips Challenge. You get this extra background, but that's it. This was another one I was pretty disappointed in, Microsoft Arcade. It comes with these vertically oriented arcade games, home ports of them like Centipede. You'd think being able to go into full screen, you'd get it, but look at that's all it does. <laughs> it's, it's so close to being perfectly suited for the radius pivot display, but nope. This is as good as it gets. Another game I was disappointed to see is not exactly optimized for this kind of setup is Sim Tower from Maxis, the skyscraper simulator. You'd think this would be ideal being a vertical thing, but. Yeah, unfortunately not as awesome as that startup sound always has been and continues to be. So yeah, uh, unfortunately, maximizing this, that is as tall as it gets. It seems to be that, you know, going with 1,024 pixels tall is definitely limiting in uh, a lot of programs for Windows 3.1 or more than I was realizing. So I bet if I were to decrease the resolution to 640 by 480, you would be okay? Or maybe even 800 by 600. I don't know how tall that is exactly, but um, yeah, doesn't work, <laughs> which sucks. Because I mean, yeah, let me, let, you'd have so much more space to view your tower, but you know. It's also really slow in the 486 and this particular graphics card. Anyway, I was gonna say, I believe that Ute Tower would be okay, but you saw as slow as that was running. I'm not even gonna try putting that on here, so forget that. Something that is pretty excellent on the radius pivot is SimCity. Now the startup screen is similarly limited, but yeah. If we get into the actual gameplay, you can of course maximize the entire uh, play area and then you can maximize the gameplay window and it looks phenomenal. Like, ah oh man, not only just having it in portrait mode, but the fact that it is so high resolution and this is such a nice monitor, you know, for 1991, uh, 0.28 millimeter dot pitch and such, nice colors. Of course, you probably noticed long ago, the, uh, the geometry is a little wonky on this one, but, you know, I'm assuming that it would probably just... Mm -hmm. Maybe get a little wonky anyway, just because it's rotating back and forth, and who knows, like, the, the magnets that make it do its thing inside there might have uh, came a little loose or something. Uh, there's no controls for geometry whatsoever, at least not without taking the thing apart, going inside and finding some pots in there somewhere that might adjust that. So maybe I'll do that in the future. Uh, to be honest, the thing also needs a recap. So whenever I do that, I'll see if I can adjust the geometry. But yeah, dude, I love the way this looks. <laughs> it's awesome. And it adjusts well when you go to the, uh... yeah, landscape mode. Look at that. The card and the software just does its thing. And it's brilliant with that nice fade in and out. Ah. <laughs> that is unendingly fascinating to me. I've just never seen any other Windows 3.1 machine do this, at least on its own. Like I've got some Windows 3.1 tablets. I've covered those before on LGR and they have um, like a button or a, a toggle in software to switch between portrait and landscape, but the fact that it's got that mercury sensor is just awesome. Here's another one that's just kind of ideal for this situation. This is the shareware game Slam. I mean, it's air hockey and it's a vertical game. You know, normally you have a lot of blank space on the left and right when you're playing this. Oh, the sound 
Not a good idea. Made it way too slow. <laughs> well, anyway, you get the point. If it's something designed in such a way as to properly scale up to whatever resolution and aspect ratio you got going on, orientation in this case, it's awesome. I mean, Slam, this this will, it's one reason I enjoy testing it out on different hardware is because it'll just play on anything and adapt to whatever display you've got. It's just fun like that. And lastly, of course, one of the things I was most looking forward to testing out, Print Shop Deluxe. And of course, you got signs and greeting cards, letters and calendars and whatever, yeah. All these things that are uh, in a portrait orientation. Let's go ahead and open a, uh, a classic because of course, <laughs> uh-huh. All right, let's see this full thing render in. Look at that, filling up pretty much the entire screen so you can get very close to the actual size of what the eventual printout will be. In fact, I think if we go to, yeah, actual size. There we go. Yeah, look at that. So that, yeah, that, I mean, that, yeah, that looks just as it would if you were to print this out on a full eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper. Uh, you can see the borders there just sort of cut off, but that's fine because uh, the monitor itself is, I think, 10 and a half inches this way. There we go. Big old crab. We gotta make the crab bigger because we've gotta display that allows us to see more of it. Yeah, I mean, who wants to edit their posters and print shot deluxe like this? You gotta scroll up and down. Not anymore. We got Cool Crab at his absolute vertically coolest. Just right here. It's such a cool display. Honestly, one of my favorite things that I've got now. Eh, sometimes oddware sucks. Sometimes it's absolutely awesome. And this is very much the latter. Mm, mystifying. Yeah, that's about it for this video on the Radius Pivot full page display, the SVGA color version from 1991. I think it's awesome. I really like it a whole lot and uh, I wish there were more of them in the world so more people could collect them and experience them and give them a new life because honestly it's still pretty darn useful and if nothing else <laughs> just entertaining to mess around with and see what it can and can't do or uh, what's optimized for it or uh, any, any uh, all these kind of variables that make something like this in terms of an old display that does weird things pretty fun. So yeah it's just a a treat all around. Uh, thank you very much once again to Dan for hooking me up so we can all experience this together. And uh, let me know if you have any experience with this particular monitor yourself or any of the other things that Radius made back in the day. A whole lot more stuff was put out by them for the Mac. Uh, if you had experience with those, yeah, let me know. I'm, I'm curious now to dive more into what they created. And uh, I don't know if there was any Windows 95 drivers for the Radius Pivot here made for the PC, but if there were, that'd be cool to find and maybe do a follow-up sometime in my Blurbs channel or something. Uh, but yeah, that's all just future stuff. Let me know your thoughts in the comments, and thank you for watching. And if you did enjoy what you just saw, then fantastic. I've got plenty more Oddware episodes on various things, along with videos on all kinds of different retro computery topics here each week on LGR. And once again, thank you for watching.